Heat stress can impact all New Zealand dairy cows, knocking down milk production and having an impact on animal health. When temperatures get above 21 degrees Celsius and relative humidity above 70%, that is when heat stress can impact any cow right throughout New Zealand over the summer months. So there's two sides to heat stress in New Zealand dairy cows. There's the physical and environmental side where we see increases in temperature. And then the second side is the effect that that increase in temperature has on the grass. So as the temperatures increase, the grass stresses, which increases its Lolotrim B and ergovalene toxin content. Now that toxin has a direct negative impact on the cow. The environmental or the physical side of heat stress is the most common effect in New Zealand dairy cows. So heat stress actually occurs at any temperatures above 21 degrees Celsius and humidities above 70%. So the Dairy NZ data showed that there's a large proportion of New Zealand dairy cows that are affected by heat stress. So the effects of heat stress is a drop in milk production, namely milk solids, because of a decreased appetite in the cow. Interestingly, the heat stress often occurs at the same time as pasture quality drops. Now the reason for this is the same heat that's stressing the animal is also stressing the plant. So it's really important that you look at the environmental direct impacts of heat stress on the cow as well as what's happening in the grass. Along with the drop in milk production, you also see an increase in cow salivation as a result of heat stress. So there's two main factors that we can use to help reduce heat stress in our dairy cows. So the first factor that we can adjust in her environment is always having sufficient water available. So that's not just checking the water troughs, that it's making sure the source of water is clean and that it's regular right throughout the day because they need the water to try and help cool their bodies down. So keeping plenty of water in front of the cows and making sure you've got adequate water right through the day is essential when temperatures are rising. The second factor is shade. Now shade can gain you a 30 to 50% reduction in heat stress. So any shade you can provide those cows is absolute gold. You'll often see the cows grouping together in a paddock. That's actually them trying to draw shade off each other. So if you can provide the cow shade, that makes a huge difference. So the third factor is having sprinklers in the yard. Now it seems like a very simple thing, but having water going onto the cows when they're standing in the yard makes a massive difference because they heat up or the biggest effect of heat stress is often the reflection of the sun off the concrete. So having sprinklers in the yard and even having water going over the concrete just to cool it down can make a huge difference. So changing feeding times is one of the biggest environmental factor I hammer with farmers because it has the biggest impact on reducing heat stress. Obviously heat stress has a direct impact on reducing cow appetite. So when you reduce cow appetite, you reduce the amount of ME going into the animal. If you reduce the amount of ME going in, you're reducing milk production, but you're also having a negative impact on body condition, the health of the cow, and also pregnancy. So if you're having a drop in energy going into the cow due to heat stress, you're gonna have more slippage late in mating. So the key thing of changing feeding times is helping the cows to work harder at night when it's cooler. So the way we do that is we always give them the best quality feed at night when they have the energy and the ability to eat it. So the worst thing you can ever do is put the cows into a morning break that they don't clean up and then put them back into that break to clean it up at night because the residual is high. The best thing you can do is make sure you're always giving your cows a fresh break at night so they have full access when they have their largest amount of energy to eat as much as possible and if you have to, put them back into that paddock in the morning to clean up. Now another really important thing is to increase your supplementation. And so especially if pasture quality is dropping a bit, um, increase grains in the shed or high energy dense feeds. Now if you do that, that's going to help um, for every mouthful the cow eats, it's going to increase the amount of energy going into her diet and it's going to help reduce the effects of heat stress on the cow. So along with feed supplementation, mineral supplementation is critical. So chromium propionate is a key tool to help fight heat stress. It increases the cow's ability to mobilize and release energy in the diet. Copper, zinc, cobalt, iodine, and selenium are all essential trace minerals. Now selenium is one of the key trace minerals in increasing the cow's ability to deal with oxidative damage. 
So an increase in heat stress sees a massive increase in oxidative damage which has a direct impact on the reproductive system and all other health processes in the cow. Thirdly, seaweed is a powerful tonic in helping the cow deal with heat stress. What it does is it helps to protect and increase the health of the liver, fortifying the liver and making sure that those toxins are stripped out of the animal before they can do some real damage. So in summary, heat stress is most likely to affect your cows at a temperature above 21 degrees Celsius with relative humidity above 70%. So it's something to look out for because it is certainly not uncommon to get those environmental effects right throughout New Zealand. So along with environmental factors, mineral supplementation is a key lever we can pull in preventing heat stress in our cows making sure they have adequate supplementation and making sure the cow is getting the most out of every blade of grass that she's eating.